everyone, my name is Judy Storer and I'm the Research and Development Coordinator with Libra Group. Today we're doing a virtual field walk instead of a physical one, so you guys can see this from wherever you are. Uh, today we're looking at a demonstration site that was established as part of the amelioration of subsoil aluminium toxicity for improved productivity in the Northern Agricultural Region of WA project. The project has been funded by the Australian Government through the NLP through the Small Farms Grants Program. The project is looking at comparing the effects of ameliorants uh, on subsoil aluminium when they are incorporated to depth. The ameliorants we've addressed are lime, gypsum and biochar. Let's go across to Angus McAlpine, agronomist from CSBP, to talk a little bit about aluminium toxicity in your soils. Soils with low pH can have a detrimental effect on crop establishment, growth and overall yield. The major issue with acidic soils across WA's wheat belt is aluminium toxicity. Aluminium is naturally present in our local soils and becomes available in soil solution when our pH drops below 4.8 in calcium chloride. Toxic levels of aluminium in the soil profile can affect root cell division and the ability for the plant's root to elongate. Overall root growth can be reduced including the branching of the finer roots. The finer roots are important to access nutrients that have low mobility throughout the soil profile, such as phosphorus. The reduction in deeper roots can limit access to subsoil moisture, which is important when filling grain late in the season. The most common certified Australian labs soil test will refer to pH in water or calcium chloride. The typical pH range targets that would be appear in local research would be given in pH in calcium chloride. In most cases, measuring the subsoil pH will give you a good indicator of aluminium levels alone. However, a specific test can be done to measure aluminium that's extractable in calcium chloride. As a rule of thumb, when this level gets above five milligrams per kilogram of aluminium, this will be toxic to most tolerant species of crops. Again, if your soil pH is above 4.5, most aluminium levels will not be a problem, so an additional test may be unnecessary. Testing the topsoil for aluminium has little value as the presence of organic matter containing non-toxic forms of aluminium will be extracted and may not represent what is in the soil solution. Recent long-term trends of minimum to no-till farming practices mean that the topsoil profile isn't getting mixed to depth as regularly as it historically did. This can result in layers of soil that can vary quite dramatically in acidity. In addition to pH, nutrients such as phosphorus and potassium can become stratified throughout the profile and sufficient levels in the topsoil might be hiding depleted levels at depth. So in testing for subsoil pH, the phosphorus and potassium test done alongside can provide a clearer picture of what our liming and nutrient requirements might be. Also, if any forms of tillage such as moldboarding, spading or disking occurs, knowing what the soil profile looked like beforehand will help with management afterwards. Thank you. At our site, we have a pH of about six in the top 10 centimetres, but the pH then drops to four uh, below that. Um, and when we're looking at toxic aluminium, aluminium becomes toxic and limiting to growth when it is above five milligrams per kilogram. Um, and at this site, it's above below one milligram per kilogram in the top 10 centimetres, but then goes up to between 10 and 30 milligrams per kilogram below that. So it is expected to be a limiting effect, uh, factor at this site. For the demonstration, we used four treatments. Uh, lime at three tonnes a hectare, gypsum at three tonnes a hectare, biochar at two tonnes a hectare and an untreated control. And we have two replications which have been randomised. Today I'm here at the site in East Dowell New with Shannon Fry. Uh, Shannon, would you like to tell me a little bit about yourself and your business here? Yeah, not a problem. Um, yeah, Shannon Fry, uh, co-farm this farm with my brother. Um, yeah, we run mostly just cereals, um, do canola, barley and um, wheat. Um, I keep it very simple. Um, we've only really been, yes, using lime and uh, amelioration uh, in the last 10 years, we're a little bit behind a lot of people, um, but yeah, we're getting there. So would you like to tell us a little bit about your experience with the trial? Why did you first become interested in being involved? 
Um, you were actually put onto us by our neighbours. Um, you were looking for a site, Wadril site, obviously, um, with no um, deep incorporation of lime. Um, and yeah, we had the perfect site for you. So um, yeah, you came across here and that was about the end of it. Uh, so how was it in implementing the trial and working with the products? Um, yeah, most of it all went very well, um, except for the biochar, of course, which was uh, quite, uh, yeah, quite light and fluffy. Um, we had a few problems of trying to <coughs> get, get the amount put over the spinners, um, didn't want to overload the spinners too much. Um, but yeah, we got there in the end. In, in the end, we had to um, do two passes uh, to get the product out. Um, but yeah, I'm sure, yeah, we we're only doing um, six metre widths. Um, so it could have been, yeah, a lot easier if we'd spread it out a bit more. I think, mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Uh, so what have you noticed uh, working across the trial over the course of the season? Um, I think there has been a, a bit of a yield response. I think most of it comes from the, the deep ripping itself. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, there's a lot of weeds that have come up in the ripped areas. Um, but that always happens here. Yeah, if you do any sort of tillage work just before um, seeding, then it's usually the case. Um, but yeah, the heads look bigger. Um, it stayed green longer. And I, I think it will out yield the other, the other sites. So um, yeah, that's about it. So we're gonna continue using these techniques in coming years? Uh, yes, we will. Well, we have been in, yeah, the last 10 years, as I say, but um, we will continue to use them. Uh, yeah, just waiting to see how the biochar comes back and, yeah, see if that's going to be any benefits as well. So. Yeah, it'll definitely be interesting to see how all the results come through. Yep. Uh, speaking of, let's go across to the trial and speak a little bit more about the results we have so far. When looking at the results we've collected so far from the site, with our early and late plant counts, uh, with the early establishment plant counts, we did see that the unripped treatments um, did have better establishment uh, because the seed bed was likely better in the uh, less disturbed sand. Uh, however, at the later plant count, um, the other treatments had caught up a little bit and plant numbers across the site were more even. There was also more weeds in the treated strips with the incorporation so close to seeding having bought up a lot of weed seeds and there was a lot of ryegrass in the treated strips. Uh, we also took some tissue samples from each of the treatments to see if there was any difference in the nutrient uptake of the plants due to the treatments. However, uh, at our first look, there did not seem to be anything significant in these results. Um, we will have another look at them a bit more closely and do some statistics around them, uh, so maybe we'll get some results later. Additionally, um, if we look across the trial, there is a clear difference between the treated and untreated in um, better vigour and staying greener for longer and larger heads, which is a really great sign. And also as we walk through the trial, we have seen some significant differences in head size between the treatments, so we're really excited to see what yields we get when we come to harvest this trial.